people. Yeah, Phil, and take a moment, share the broadcast. Take a moment and share the broadcast. I have not reminded you as of late. Yours or mine? Huh? She said the camera's smudgy. Mine or yours? Could you hit those oh, the volumes? No, 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 the volumes. Oh, thank you. All right, y'all. Let's get this thing cracking. And give everybody a little white. No, oh, they're dry. WVON traffic and weather now. So I got to figure out a way to set the levels on this microphone because it's not the levels that are going out. I think Sonia has those set. It's really the levels that are going out over the Facebook Live broadcast, which is this mic here. All right, y'all, take a moment, share the broadcast. Take a moment, share the broadcast. Ah, the buffoonery I must deal with. Actually, I must not. I think I have decided. Have y'all taken a moment to share the broadcast? Share the broadcast. For all the lovers out there. Corporation or our participating sponsors. Live from the Infinity Studios at WVON. We're your original You're listening to The Morning Show with Mays Jackson on the Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON. Rise and shine. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Let's get this. Well, let's change.
Hit your mute button. Wake up, Chicago. Wake up, world. This is the WVON Morning Show. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Todd, how you feeling this morning? Hey, Maze. It was tough, man. I didn't think I was going to get here. What, what was the matter, man? What was what was the problem? I got to the garage. Uh-oh. And, and, and the people was in it. No, you pull, you know, you pull the ticket out, right? Uh-huh. So I pulled my ticket out, and the gate doesn't go up. And it says, pull the ticket. So... There's a truck right behind me, too. So I pull another ticket, and the gate still doesn't go up. I hit the intercom, and it's just ringing and ringing. I'm like, all right, third time's a charm. Pull a ticket, and it goes up. You know I was what? I'm going to be stuck. The guy's going to come out with a crowbar and then break my, my windshield or something. I mean, you can't be scared like that. Todd, I got you, man. You should have just texted me, man. I would have came down. You know what I'm saying? You see, I told you, man. When dude, somebody come in here, they got a problem with you, man. They got a problem with me. So I'm like, just call me up, man. Just be like, hey, man, you know I'm usually you know, here. With this, we're stuck. By the time you got down... That probably would have been mush. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you got to have some confidence, man. You got to go into As a fighter? It. Hey, man, you got to have some confidence. Look, I'm man. I'm a scrapper, but I, I need to be upset. You got to be. Oh, uh, you got to get all upset. Yeah, I noticed when like you get upset. Man. Like, we got to get Harold Lucas to get. You just think of Harold Lucas, right? <laughs> think of Harold Lucas and think about how he calls you. You know, all of the names, uh, and then you can just get. You know, it's like you like Popeye, you need some spinach. Yeah. I am what I am, and it's all that I am. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. <laughs> All right, this is the WVON Morning Show. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. Got my co-host, <coughs> excuse me, that Popeye. Ty, yeah, got my co-host, Ty Stroger. You know, I got to learn how to do that with my gut, not my throat. Uh-huh. All right, I right, uh, got to say what's up to Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom. Jennifer, how you feeling this morning? I'm great. It does. I heard that. <laughs> oh, is that my fan? Warming up. Is this the fan? Oh, okay. Well, in that case, oh, okay. Well, look, you got a fan. I got a fan. Everybody's got a fan. Hey, man, because if we don't have a fan, we might pass out, man. I'm going to tell you, it's hot in the mug. All right, that is Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom. Let me say what's up to the musical conductor of the Soul Plane, Miss Sonia Escobar. Sonia Escobar, how you feeling this morning? All right, well, it sounds like everybody is locked and loaded. Let's get this plane up, up, up and away. We are 60,000, I said 60,000 feet in the air. All right, I got questions. All right, all right. Todd, you got you got to be paying attention, man. We're going to fly because we got to do some work today. All right, check this out. First of all, what the heck is going on at, let me, uh, hold on. You know how it's going to work on my levels. I started already. All right, so first of all, what the heck? Huh is going on at Lincoln Park High School. Something else happened? They fired somebody else. Who was it? I, I you know what? I, I we gotta get to the bottom of the it. Man, no, the janitor is probably the only one that's safe. Um I'm going to say that this Lincoln Park scandal is I, I okay. I call this the CPS watch. And we're gonna talk about it at eight o'clock. Mm-hmm. But I believe that the CPS watch should begin now. I'm telling you now. I, I, there were things that were happening. Like, did you see the cheating scandal? Where they were like, where the like the attorney, what's his name, the inspector general on his way out, was like, his last report was like, they were talking about straight up cheating on the standardized testing. Ooh. Uh, across, like, system wide. Which, I'm going to tell you, that means that they are planning the scapegoat. They are playing. I'm telling you. I'm, Somebody's I, head's gonna roll. What's up? Uh, you mean a pie? Somebody's head. A pie. Very, very, very. Uh, a pie. You said a pie, like a pie. Yeah, someone's head is going to roll, and I am telling you, Todd. Yeah, you know what y'all call? What's my nickname? Ma- Mace, beside, beside. Well, I'm actually a minister. 
But besides being Minister Mays, remember I'm the Maestro Damas. <laughs> I am the Maestro Damas, and I tell you these things, and then you nobody listens to me. And then when they come true, they like, you know what? We gotta start keeping a list. And you know what else we gotta do when I make predictions? We gotta record them and put them in a folder. And then when they come true, then you say, I can just pull them up and I won't even have to say I told you. But uh, that sounds good. For you. <laughs> it is bubbling. There is something bubbling underneath. You lost the inspector general. You fired five principals at, at one school. They can't seem to get it right. We saw the pre basketball coach, coach at Kirk Curie lose his job. There's going to be more, and I am telling you now. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you. When I first got to Springfield, I uh, we went had a freshman orientation, and I had dinner with like five Republicans mm -hmm. from. DuPage mostly, uh, I think Rutherford was there, and he's from like Bloomington, and they were like, we think that you ought to s cut the school district up and add the suburbs to it. We take some of those schools in. I was like, I ain't never gonna happen, <laughs> and I don't even think your people would let that happen. <laughs> but that was uh, that was one of their thoughts. Well, I'm gonna tell you, there we gotta watch. I'm telling you now, the CPS watch should begin. Um, Todd, uh, you know what, man? Mm, mm, mm. I'm telling you, that's going to be crazy. All right. Hey, man, you know what? I, I went out to dinner last night. I had dinner with a very interesting character last night. Guess who? Somebody you know? Yeah, somebody I know but never really sat down and had a real conversation with. He's pretty infamous on our side of town, too. I know a lot of characters, so I don't uh, know who that Well, he, he was one of your former colleagues. Ricky Ender. No. Uh-uh. No. But he's a character. <laughs> <laughs> Dick Mel. Oh, Dick Mel. I had dinner with Dick Mel yesterday. And can I tell you what? What you threw me off with that your side of town thing. Well, or you know. Well, he ain't on our side of town. Yeah. And and he knows it. And we know. But you know what? It was interesting. Remember how you were talking about how um, Rod came down there with a chip on his shoulder? Yes. It was. You know what? It was really a fascinating conversation just to hear a different perspective in power. Like, and he, he really, he can talk. And it, it's like you're his best friend. I'm going to tell you what. It, it, it was good. And can I also tell you something? I have decided that I got to do a Harold Washington documentary. Not a movie. Not any acting. Just for the people that were alive during that, what they did then and what they did now. It I think that's, that's smart. It, for one thing, I think it, what the last documentary didn't do, and I know the guy who put it together, it wasn't, it was, it wasn't that it was a bad one. But it didn't talk to the other side. I am going to tell you. Just I mean, let me tell you something. Dorothy Tillman was telling a story that about uh, Mayor Sawyer on when everything was going down, and it was so crazy because she and Dick Mel told literally the, same the exact same story, but from different vantage points. Like that says everything. That was exactly the same. They described it. Like, I mean, when they were talking about it, both of them, I could literally, it was like they were both seeing the same thing, but one was looking at it from the white. Oh, my God. I mean, yesterday, if you were like a political junkie, that conversation was fascinating. I would love to put them all in a room together now and have that discussion. Look, it's I'm a talk to my cousin. It's they start looking for grants. Look, it's the Talk of Chicago, 1690. We'll be back after traffic and the weather. Man, bro, when I tell you, I mean, like, they, Dorothy Tillman was describing the scene when Gene Sawyer was walking and they and the people was helping him. Yeah, they said he did something right. So she described it exact same way, but um, he described it as... He said the pressure was so great that Gene actually, Mayor Sawyer actually passed out. And the guy behind him grabbed him by the pants so he didn't hit the floor. Wow. Right? So, because he was right there. They were like, and it was like, he was describing how like Gene did not want to, Mayor Sawyer did not want to come out and be, and he was just like, and it was like, so about the people on the outside of the door and the people on the inside of the door. And what was happening, like imagine if you could split screen the outside, like the what the everybody on the inside talking about 
Gene Sawyer and telling them you got this and the people on the outside being like don't you take it right. you'll be the what it and then to find out who was playing what and to hear him describe like how black people had surrounded City Hall and it was like just they was like scared to come out it was I mean I was just sitting there like damn I mean it like and I am not I am a fan of politics like and quite frankly talking to him I mean you know like I think everybody was racially how they were right like the black people the white people everybody was very ethnically driven at the time so they probably did use some very colorful language right oh I know I mean I wasn't there but I know him <laughs> um yeah. He was describing how he had no clue the support and the love that Harold Washington had until they were in the limos riding to the funeral and he couldn't believe that people were stacked 10 deep oh, uh, yeah. all the, like he was like they never knew right like they never had any clue about but that just shows you how segregated, how segregated and and man I'm just telling you day. Right. I mean, but I'm telling you, I was like, I want to bring them on the morning. Like, Come I on, man. We can be executive producers. I'm going to start working on this money thing right now. Well, first I got to work on starting the foundation because I think we, you need a foundation to raise money. See, I think you know, why don't you... People don't give you money unless it's, uh, they can write off. You know who we should talk to? Who? We could talk to Cartemquin, the guys who... And we could tell them that we want to do it. And maybe get it with... Rel uh, uh, reliant meat. I mean, like the people. Well, I did the, well, you raise the money to pay the guys who actually do documentaries. Well, I'm gonna tell you what, man. But like, but, but you're the executive producer, so, so you, you know. pull it all together and yeah. you make the profit. Well, I'm gonna tell but you, even man. If there's it, no profit, but you're the you're the grip. Man, I don't know how that profit stuff works. I got oh no, you sell it, then you get a cut of the distribution and all that stuff. Hmm. Tell Todd I don't have a clock. Tell my clock is on all zeros. So I don't know what time I'm looking at. You are tuned in to the Talk Chicago 16, 9 a.m. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Hey, Todd. I'm going to tell you. I, I'm going to move on past this. But uh, actually, you know what? Maybe we'll talk about that at um, 8 o'clock a little bit, too. But that dinner with uh, Alderman Mel yesterday, mm -hmm. it was awesome to hear... I, you know, I'm just a fan of Chicago politics, and now looking at the reflections and being able to hear what the perspective of both sides of the room was, I'm telling you, Ty, we could make a killing off of that. I think you're right. You could take it to Netflix. I'm telling you, you could really do Hulu. Somebody, people would watch that, and I really think who's that, gonna be our narrator? Narrator. Um, uh, I don't know yet. James Earl Jones. You know who I like? Who? I like uh, Keith David. Or is it David Keith? I, was I don't know who that is. I think we need oh, like you a, know him. A, a, you remember Roddy Roddy Piper's movie? No. Oh, man, where were you? Uh, not watching Roddy Roddy Piper's movie. <laughs> uh, I probably oh, do. Oh. Mary, uh, something wrong with Mary or something uh -huh. about Mary? Uh -huh. Oh, that guy! Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, he did all this yeah, movie. He's got a great that voice. makes yes, I like him. But I think for this, we have to get a black voice. He is black. Yes. Wait, I don't remember that. Mary's father. Oh, yeah. Oh, the one who zipped him up. In. Oh. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, that was such yeah, a... Like, oh. I can't oh. even think about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Look, it's the WVO Morning Show. We are just uh, squirrel chasing this morning. Yeah. All right. Um, let me say this. Um, the debate performance, we're going to talk about that a little bit. Who won? Who didn't? Hey, I'm going to check out Simone Sanders today. So I think... Um, cool. Simone Sanders, man. Okay. She's the black lady who is like the chief strategist consultant for um, Joe Biden. She was Bernie Sanders. Remember the black lady who was came to fame during um, Bernie Sanders' campaign last time? Nope. Oh, well, it was a sister. She was always on TV. She was like the black lady. Yeah. She then got an upgrade. Well, initially it was an upgrade over to Joe Biden because, you know, 
Joe Biden was going to fund. Right, well, he had more money. And that things are. But I'll be interested to see um, what happens this time. Um, but I can't, I'm going to check her out today. Uh, Carrie and I are going to go see her today. Um, but I'm going to be asking her what she thought about who won the debate. Of course, she's going to say Joe Biden. Um, I don't. What, what do you think won the debate? I did hear some people say that, that Joe Biden looked good because he uh, he didn't make any mistakes, which he seems to be doing a lot lately. Mm -hmm. So that was like a win. Okay. Well, I don't know, man. I'm going to tell you uh, that I, I am interested to see how this thing plays out. Uh, Joe Biden, though, I do think is going to win South Carolina. Uh, did you notice yesterday when somebody said Barack Obama, though? The people kind of like uh, who was it who tried to use Barack Obama? Bernie tried to use Barack Obama. People were like no, 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 no. <laughs> it was like no, 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 no. You know, Bernie's got a lot of uh, it's a cachet. I mean, he he has been he did a lot of stuff in his life. Yeah, no, Bernie thinks he's Eminem man. <laughs> he he, he I, you know I just yeah, don't. There, there is something. I there. don't like Eminems. Like if you're a white guy, just be a white guy. You I mean you could be. You can be a, a you can be an ally, but don't be like I'm one of you. You're not one of me. No, you can never be. That. Not from Vermont, right? No, like I didn't black that, people in Vermont. You, he has either. Right. Okay, I'm gonna stop. All right. Okay, the shooting. Did you see about the shooting in your neighborhood? Is that your neighborhood? Uh, yeah. Avalon is. Park. That's it. Uh, 79th Street. What was it? Uh, 1200 East 79th. Avalon. Uh, tied four people. Was it four people shot? Five. Five people shot. One uh, eighteen-year-old young lady murdered. I they said and one sixty-three. I mean, it, and it one, ran the the gamut there. Yeah, they said the guys. Three guys walked up, looked in the window, looked in, saw, and then shot and shot up the place. It always seems like they never get the people. Like y'all, can we get people to go to the range? Like, I'm just saying. Like, I almost feel like something. Did you see the story about, like, because this reminds me of the West Side Barbershop where the guys smiled at each other, saw their target, smiled at each other, and then shot up the, the shop and then killed people but not the person they was killing? I almost feel like people should announce who they coming to kill and just say, um, just say who's who they coming to kill. All y'all get out. Everybody else go to the side. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I'm saying. Because this is really crazy. Um, it's always been this way. I, I remember in the '90s, and you know, they say something, and the, they they uh, say something to the shooter. You know, once they they arrested them, and they be like, "Well, they shouldn't have been there." Mm. Be like, what you right, man? Like, you know, remember when they used to be like, "What you right?" Todd, you still Todd? I think you still got a fear of uh, of uh, Pittsburgh Pirates hats. <laughs> I didn't, you know, I, I was. <laughs> I, I wish you could have heard yourself. You said, shoot. I just like the Pirates, but I was uh, rooting for Baltimore, to be honest with you. Uh, speaking of rooting, did you see Bolingbrook, uh, the Bolingbrook Raiders beat home with Flossmore last night? Oh, man, poor HF. Uh, no, what? I know people from HF. What? You, know, you know real people from Bolingbrook. You know HF stole our coach. That's why I don't have no mercy. Oh, really? Man. They stole our award-winning girls basketball coach. You know, we just... You know, Bolingbrook. You know, Bolingbrook is off the chain, right? Like for real, athletically too. I believe you. Yes, I know you should, because this same nations have a um, football team. No, nah, y'all just had the lobbyists who shook, who stole the whole state. You all, you all made you. What did they teach at that school, man? At Saint Ignatius, think about how many Saint Ignatius people are walking around with the money meant for black people. <laughs> <laughs> That Tom Cullen is on my list, man. Uh, I mean, I can't believe you. Tom, and that was your classmate, too. Tom, Can I come to your room? I don't know what Tom did, but he is a nice guy. <laughs> what? Okay, so, see? Do y'all see how Ty do you? See, not Ty. Anytime I, I, somebody... Look, look, check I'm this just out. talking personally. We got along well. See, this is how Ty do you. See, this This. This is what happens. See, Ty, you see anybody Ty tell me you got a problem with, they come around here before they even get to sit down and be like, you got a problem with my man? Cause you need to get it straightened out. So I'd be like, no problem. I was like, cause you know, I was ready to get it, get it in with Rod for you. <laughs> I was ready to get it in for Tony Franklin. Nah, you and, didn't say Tom was holding your money back. Tom was the guy who took who who was reporting on my emails. So you know, I'm gonna get the. Uh, well, you know, I never did see the capital back. Oh well, you know what? You should read the 1,200 emails like I did. But check this out. Here's what I'm. I think I am gonna FOIA. Cause I, I think I'm a FOIA. I, now that I really get the 1200 emails from, because I will do that. You can click on the link 
And, and you know what? You would probably find the 1200. Wait, wait, where's the link? On WBEZ.com. Okay. Yeah, but I'm going to tell you, if you click on that link, uh -huh. actually, Todd, I'll just email it to you. But when you click on the link and you read all those emails and how they was talking about people, I'm going to tell you, if I was a legislator, I would be offended. I really would. Like, I mean, when, 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 when McLean tells Mapes, this is what you will tell your, your members to think, I was like, dang. I mean, when you say... I get it. You, well, I, you know, it's been my theory, I've said this before, that the Indians, every once in a while, nah, forget that, don't say Indians. <laughs> that, Native Americans. Not even them, but that the, the people in the group every once in a while have to burn something down or they don't get respected. <laughs> oh, well, I'm going to tell you what. They clearly, I mean, the emails clearly demonstrate that no matter how, remember how I told you the lobbyists were more important than the legislators? Yeah. Think about this. In the, if you read those emails, the staffers are more important than the legislators. The legislators are replaceable, as the emails demonstrate. Well, I saw that in real life where Guys who came from those, you know, those iffy different districts that are like 55, uh -huh. 45. The staffers would tell the legislators, you got to vote this way. And the legislators like, no, I want to do this. No! You've got to do it this way. How about this, though? They were so bold with it. Like, if you said no now, the, the staffer would pull you off and put another legislator in your place. Like a chess piece. You mean in the committee? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, think, think about that. You're there to represent your constituency. You're wanting to vote no. And then some pencil neck walks up and says, you're out of here. We're going to put our own guy in. That's the power of the speaker. That's the power of, you well, know what? That's well, white power. Let's talk Chicago 1690. We'll be back. Well, if there was a black speaker, you could do that too. But right, right, but we ain't got a black leader. No. So think about when, I mean, you know my feelings are still a little bit. I'm still a little bit touchy about reading the, the LG email about LG threat, thwart, thwarting the 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 criminal justice the Mike the anti Mike Brown measures. Oh right, yeah. Like they said, they gave them all. Everybody was filing bills. They gave them all to him to make nothing happen. Yeah, that's pretty crappy. I mean, but to think about it, it's in writing. But it, it also tells you what what they fight about. I mean. There are things that they try to do that we would never even think that should even be on the radar. I mean, but when do we say no? Like, Mike Brown is the time when black people could be like, whatever. We should have been able to push whatever with a black dog. No, I totally, I totally agree with the, with the you maze. We should have been able to, uh, well, coalesce on some things and push for it. I, and I think that we just... We forget. We are. I didn't share the broadcast. You didn't share the broadcast. Well, I'm going to tell you. I need everyone to take a moment and share the broadcast. Man, Ty. See, I just wanted to go back to this stuff. So you see how Ty did me, right? He was like, Tom was my friend. I was like, I don't care. He tried to play me. He tried to do me. Let me tell you. So let me tell you what these white boys was doing. They. But this is what we missed in the whole thing. The white boys would be reading my stuff like, oh my God, he's exposing us, right? Mm -hmm. And running back and telling the speaker or telling their team so that they could come up with something because they were always in fear, not fear, but they were consistently concerned about, well, remember, they were consistently concerned about the things I would say. Remember I oh, told no, you. Because uh, enough stuff comes out over the long haul, then that, then that kind of adds up and people might actually start paying attention. They don't want that. That's what they don't want. They right. don't want the light. And so, they then figure this out, right? So they, so now, we know that there are these people that are reporting back on what I'm saying. And the black people, instead of saying, dang, they're concerned about him. How can I leverage that for power? They say, can you hand me a sword, sir, so I can go kill my leverage? Right, right. What did I used to, to tell you, Maze? I don't know if I told you. But I used to always say that my, my father would say that he needed the Mau Mau to get things done. Because once they start making noise and, and threatening things, then the, the establishment who had all the power would say, how do we get them out from our doors 
and he'd say they're looking for some positions over here they're looking for this and then you can make it happen but if there's no noise from the outside or then it's like okay everything's fine can i tell you something you know who said the exact same thing True. last night in a different way Mel. dick Mel. <laughs> dick yeah. Mel was like i was he was you know he was like i was a good loser but i was a terrible winner if you ever <laughs> worked against me like man, he was talking about how he made like so. Oh, but when we were talking about how Rod came down to Springfield, it was like Rod came down to Springfield not having to agree. They had a power base oh, that yes, was impenetrable, he want, right? and he'd be like, and because oh, the I felt the same way. I was like, I can do what I want until my dad tells me don't do that. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Except and, for Rod was a great like they were. Mel is Mel is warlike. Man, you should hear him talk about like I mean if that I swear to God I miss my era. I miss my era. I miss my era. Oh, I mean? miss my era. Oh, <laughs> like just listening about the committeeman stories. This was the movie with Roddy Roddy Piper. That's funny how that popped up. <laughs> <laughs> that it didn't. It's not funny. Facebook is listening to you. Yeah, a good point. <laughs> <laughs> Man, and just asking like um, Why we don't have power Like just perspectives on that And like what black people The difference between black folks and white folks And I mean he was like me give you some good advice Oh yeah, and he was like man <coughs> He was um, He was like And like just him taking on daily And how he was able to um, Get himself a position of power By not getting along um, but knowing when, just like him telling, talking about how he had to win old, the difference between the old man daily, him, and like when they were able to secure. Close that door. I'm not. just trying to get some air. Oh. hot. Say so. so. I have to pack my bags and go. That's right. I don't come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. I don't come back no more. What you say? I don't come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. I don't come back no more. One bill. With my soul mate. Someday, okay, if you do, just no good. You say so, let's let me and go. Right, and don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more. Side, you are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mays Jackson, got my co host, Todd Stroger. Uh, Todd, you know what? I missed a few of the headlines. Let me do this okay. um, very quickly. Uh, did you see that uh, Joe Ferguson is back at it again? He had a report, and I, I think heard his name in a while. you know what we need. Todd needs to try and find see if we can get Joe Ferguson on the phone at seven o'clock. Uh, it might be too tough, but Todd, I think he may have uncovered the prison pipeline. Actually, like actually, you know they had a a grant for it. They had a grant for it um, to actually create the prison pipeline in 2006. What? <laughs> yeah. They called it a diversion program. You know what? I'm going to save it. Okay. But it was a diversion program, but it was like one for me, two for, one for you. Two for me, one, two for me. And so they were sending twice the number of people that they were diverting into prison, into the court system. They, they were like saying all these. And basically they were saying that this company... This is for the private... Uh, no, it's public. Oh, okay. I, well, I, I'll talk about it a little bit later, but it's crazy. The pipeline has been... was a One of the pipelines was revealed in this, and it's crazy when you read the story and you really think about what they this were This is doing. unbelievable, basically? It's... No, it is believable. It's like you know it's happening, but you don't. Yeah. But you can't prove it, and then you, like... 
I gotta go look at the website because I'm thinking he might have even numbers and stuff. But it was crazy. Um, Todd, uh, Trump. Did you see Trump called uh, Weinstein's verdict a great victory? You see how they did that? So it's ambiguous. So women were probably all offended and upset. And the papers, like the papers, were reading Trump calls Weinstein K, uh, verdict a victory. Right, because I'm not sure what that means. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But if you read it, he said a great victory for women. Uh, he was basically, but I felt like the press was trying to make it like, well, you know, you no, like, uh, yeah, I'm sure the press was. <laughs> like, let me leave it ambiguous. So you think he was cheering for Harvey Weinstein? I'm telling you, I'm not saying that President Trump, but I'm just saying I really do feel like the media has really lost all perspective. No, oh, I, I, I never trust the media. So. <laughs> Um, Todd, you may this is probably for like the political geeks. Uh Hosni Mubarak died. You remember Hosni Mubarak? He ruled Egypt for years and years and years. Um he brought stability there and then he got sprung by the Arab Spring. Hmm. Todd, you didn't know who Hosni Mubarak was? You no. Know. You know, there was a time where I just stopped paying attention to the world. Oh, okay. All right, because yeah. Hosni was the guy like after um uh, uh, who was the guy who, who made the peace treaty? Sadat. Sadat. After Sadat, Hosni Mubarak came. Oh. And he ruled until. I remember Hosni hey, Mubarak. Right, because I remember when Anwar Sadat died, too. Yeah. Um, oh, I told y'all Bolenbrook beat um, Homo Foster last night. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, and then coronavirus outbreak in the United States. And that, that, like they said, expected to come and it's going to blow up and it's going to be everywhere, so get ready. Meanwhile, the city of Chicago is still trying to get us to recruit us to Chinatown. Mm -hmm. I like, seriously, like, they're, they're like, come now to Chinatown and say, it's going to be ground zero. I'm, you, I'm saying it's the ground zero was China. Mm -hmm. uh, it was Chinese New Year. Uh, yeah, but I, it's a 10 degrees of Chinese New Year. Nobody goes there. Oh, <laughs> so, but they were coming here. Oh, that's true. There was a lot. The of right, exactly. That's right. That's exactly. Huh. Right. Huh. And the city is like. Well, I went to Panda Express the other day. <laughs> that's not Chinatown. Yeah, that's just close. Let me tell you, I have stopped driving, or I drive around Chinatown now. I don't even go through it. Like I don't even take Twenty Second Street. I go around it. <laughs> and it's like the city is that's like the, the city is like no Chinatown is safe. They tried to have a food crawl. Like they tried. They're like recruiting. Like the mayor's on TV talking about Chinatown is hundred percent safe. She oh, said yeah, that from know. City Hall, though. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see her with no uh, I didn't see her with no crab ragu. She, she's in her office getting oxygen. <laughs> like, <laughs> right, like it's like okay, give me one of those. Uh, no nah, man. Uh, uh, nope. Sorry. All right, let's time for the social media question of the day. Uh, I was talking about Chinatown, but let me go move to immigration. Uh, first of all, I think that the United States, uh, our states in this sanctuary city. And these policies are now at a point of craziness. Craziness, craziness. So, Todd, did you see yesterday that the uh, Sheriff's Association came out against the governor's policy uh, of releasing felons, uh, releasing convicted felons that are supposed to be deported into the public before ICE can get them? Yeah. Okay, so check this. It was this. a little complicated for me, but... It was a little complicated. So basically, here's what happens. Essentially, you're in jail, you get caught, and they find out you're an immigrant. You're an undocumented immigrant. Right. So you commit a rape, a robbery, a murder, a shooting, whatever. You go to jail. What the, what the governor's policy says is you can't be held so that ICE can come get you. Right? So essentially, they let you go before... ICE can come deport you. So if you can, they first they make you serve your time, but then before you can go back to your own country, they say we'll let you go. They would rather protect you from ICE. As so, here's the thing: they'll let you out early, or they not let you out. They'll let you out to beat, but they'll help you evade ICE. Basically, that's yes. the problem. Yes. Yeah. So here's the social media question of the day, and I want to hear from people: Should violent felons who are facing deportation be released into our communities? Now, in case you didn't hear, President Trump is dispatching special ICE agents to sanctuary towns, cities, and states, particularly places like Chicago, Illinois. Uh, in 2019, of the 223 offenders 
that were released from the Illinois Department of Corrections that were eligible to be deported. 11 of them were guilty of murder. 37 were guilty of predator, predatory sexual criminal assault, including against children. 33 weapons violations. Over 50, uh, 50 felonious vehicle uh, citations. So like drunk driving and hit somebody, etc. Now, J what what JB is let me not say JB. The Trust Act, which was passed, I believe, last year, says that I the Illinois Department of Corrections is prohibited from holding people for immigration. So now, imagine those names that I just listed went to jail, served their time, and now they are ready to be released. They will not release them to ICE. They will release them into the community before ICE can get to them, to deport them back to their country. I get that. When I watched the end of Orange is the New Black, one of the characters thought she was going to be released and her, her uh, fiancé was waiting, and they were like, <laughs> Don't tell me, don't tell me! Because I watch. Oh. Oh, you watch? I, well, I'm, I'm supposed to watch. Uh, Go ahead, you can tell me. Basically, they they took her, instead of going left, they went right, and there was ice waiting for her. And put her in a truck and sent her back home. Dominican Republic. Oh, I know exactly who which one you was, the crazy one. She played crazy and she cleaned which it. Which crazy one? <laughs> <laughs> they all were crazy. So, give us a call, 312-374-8130. Um, should violent felons facing deportation be released into our communities? Now, so, Todd... I think we've gone just a little bit too far with these sanctuary city policies. Like, what if you have the opportunity to get rid of... Now, could you imagine if they could send a black prisoner back to Africa after committing murder? Or or Haiti? Well, or, do you I think say, they would? I say Liberia is not uh, looking for any more black people looking <laughs> for America. Right. But, I got you. I'm not sure Mexico is looking for any more... Uh, murderers to come back either. Probably not. But I guess my question is, and I want black folks to give us a call, 312-374-8130. Um, should we be protecting violent offenders that are not U.S. citizens? I mean, I just think that's like a little bit tied out of control. I think that's out of control. I totally uh, uh, agree. I don't think you, we should be in the business of trying to thwart ICE in the, their duties when it comes to violent crimes. Right. I'm, and, I'm saying like... I mean, we're going to start somewhere. Let's start with the violent crimes. It, exactly. And I guess I don't under... I feel like we are so hell-bent on protecting everybody else. Like, could you imagine that being extended to black people? Like you're a violent felon, and we want to welcome you back. We don't. We don't want. No, you're not even welcome back in the communities you live in. Look, it's Talk Chicago 1690. We'll be back. More of the morning show. Do you think the Latino community want violent felons released back in the? No, I don't think so. I don't. Give us a call, 312-374-8130. Like I'm saying, who wants violent criminals dumped like back in their neighborhood? I mean, I guess that's our state of affairs. Take a moment, share the broadcast. Man, it was crazy hearing Mel talk about the maps. And what's gonna happen? No, really. Talking about how, I mean, he was he was hilarious talking. I mean, cause he was about amassing power. Crazy. I told you that story. I'm I'm sitting in the front row. It's uh, me. Uh, what was her name? Laura Presley from Champagne and Clem Ballon. 
So the ses session is over, not the session, but the day. And oh, people are just sitting around. And, uh, you know, most people are, are walking out. And I'm sitting at my desk. And uh, Rep. Bogoyevich is, I'm at one end, there's only three desks. I'm at one end. Bogoyevich is standing at the other end where Clem Balmoff uh, sits. And there's a young guy with him, a young white guy who comes up. I don't know if he, who he worked for. And they're talking. And out of nowhere, they're talking politics, you know. That's what everybody wants to do in Springfield. And out of nowhere, the guy says, you know, that eighth ward's got too much power. <laughs> and I'm thinking, what just happened? Wait, what happened? So there's this young guy talking to, to Rod. Mm -hmm. And when I say young, so I'm like 30, I guess. And Rod's probably like whatever he is, 33 or something. This kid's probably like 22 or something. Okay. And all of a sudden he says, you know, the Eighth Ward's got too much power. They got too much stuff. And I'm thinking, he probably, obviously he doesn't know who I am. <laughs> but that he thought that he should be talking about the Eighth Ward and what they have. And like you said, Mel had his own power base. At that time, Rod was there. Uh, I think it was Bruce Farley was in the Senate. Uh, and, you know, he got tons of positions all over the place. I think so. Okay, so you're gonna to say that the black or my dad wasn't even the county board president yet. He was just uh, the finance uh, chairman. The black organizations got too much stuff. When you got the daily, bro, the that mail, mug had that he had a thousand kind of jobs. Thing. He had the Department of Transportation. He was like, I got a thousand jobs. But you know what else was really um. What was crazy? <laughs> so he described how he got the black female alderman to double cross carry for Mike Alvarez. Oh really? I mean he I mean he was just talking about it, right? <laughs> like and it was like Did somebody? Down jam. In my hand. To a foreign land. To go and kill the yellow man. Born in the USA. I was born in the USA. Born in the USA, I was born in the USA. You are tuned in to the Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Todd, mm -hmm. I'm asking the social media question of the day. Should violent felons facing deportation be released into our communities? I'm going to tell you. I think it's one thing. To have U.S. citizens who've paid their debt to society return home and be rehabilitated and try to be rehabilitated and try to reintegrate. But like if you came over here to start some mess from somewhere else and you commit a murder, I'm not really worried about, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm just not really worried about what's next for you. You got to go. <laughs> right. I mean, it's like you could. It's, I, it's like coming to your house and breaking some stuff up. I don't care if you're my daughter's boyfriend. You got to go. <laughs> like It's like you put your feet on the couch with mud on your shoes. And then act like we're supposed to be like welcoming. Right. I, I really think that... I really think Democrats need to start exercising a common sense approach to dealing with Donald Trump because I think that they have gotten so rabid that some of the things that they say are almost outlandish. Oh, I don't think it has anything to do with Trump. I I, I think uh, that the... Is somebody calling you on your show? I think is that, somebody out there rabid? <laughs> I think Donald... Not Donald Trump, but I think the Democrats... Uh, have been bent, bending over backwards 
to make sure that they can keep the uh, Latino vote. And uh, in that, they're like, well, okay, if that's what you want, we're with it. Uh, and I think that that is almost crazy. Um, I think it's crazy. Okay, so I think that there's a thing going on, and I'm, I got, I'm getting texts, some people are telling me about the uh, census, and this is Donald Trump's effort to push people away from the census, and this is a way for us to encourage Latinos to come out and feel safe. I think we got to have some common sense to this. No, I totally agree. I mean, it's like, I and are we... the census argument that you want more people around, but, you know, but that person is, may stab me in one day. Or already killed somebody that you... Yeah, right. I don't want that. I, I, I always say this, and people don't hear me when I say it, but, and, and a lot of times, and black folks don't understand this at all. The people inside the organization are always more important than the people outside. You got to make sure that you deal with your people. Like, you can't put, like, I almost feel like these, that the undocumented are almost more of a priority than you, like, they get extended more stuff, can I say? Right? Like, when have they ever made a card to make sure that you can, get discount pr to prove your citizenship for black people where well, you can also get you a um a discount at wendy's think about the city key right you get a discount at wendy's with the city key huh not at wendy's but no. you get some food discounts and remember whatever ha by, the, by the way whatever happened to the city key i don't know i forgot about it That's i'm gonna tell you what happened the 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 clerk got reelected, and they didn't need another gimmick they was worried about figuring out how they was going to get people to... Look, Ron was like, how can I get all these people to vote illegally? <laughs> right? How can I send all these people to the polls? Because I know the black people... That was Ron's plan to replace the black vote. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. city key card... Can we now agree? Because have we heard anything about the city key? We haven't heard uh, uh, one thing about <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, you mentioned it, and that's the only reason I, <laughs> that it's come to my mind. I'm telling you... Now, might I... Now, mind you, do you remember? Okay, this is another I told you so moment. I know I'm moving. But I told you that the city key card was a re-election tactic that had a million-dollar budget that allowed for the clerk to be able to put their name all over the place in a way that wasn't campaigning. Mm -hmm. And remember I told you the city key card was because, and I'm not being hateful, but I'm saying the city key card, was because the clerk didn't necessarily have a base in Chicago and they were concerned that someone would be running against her and because she wasn't from the Latino community that would give the inroad there goes the Maestro Damas again no shoot that <laughs> makes total sense though <laughs> like what happened to the city key card see how we like and I, I wonder what do the real Latinos say like, do the Latinos say, we want some uh, what do the real Latinos say Sonia do they really want to have uh, undocumented felons returning to their neighborhoods. How does this make it to becoming a priority? And what does this say? Can I ask a question, Todd? Yeah. Is there any courtesy like that given to black people? Like, what? could you imagine the governor coming out and holding a press conference and saying, we want to welcome back to the neighborhood to Lincoln Park the ex-offender community <laughs> uh, no I'm saying like you know what I'm saying like really it's like it's always good for good enough for them over there always I just think that black folks can't like don't I feel like this and I also feel like this census thing like don't don't be trying to play me from don't you know what 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 how to do it that let me play with your emotions they playing with our emotions with this census right don't be playing with my emotions Smokey up uh, see man you took that from Friday I was talking about do or die and Twister emotions so Todd I think we need so can I ask a question what do you think the Black Caucus what did he say to the Black Caucus about this 
Like, I think everybody needs to start checking it. I think we need to get a response from the Black Caucus on. Like, how do you all feel about uh, the government? Yeah, I don't think anybody asked them. What? But I think if they do, they'll probably be like, we're with our brothers in support. I don't know. I th- no, I take that back. Strike that. Wait, so do you think that the Black that. Caucus should support Violet? Okay, so let me ask a question. Nah, should no, the I, Black Caucus... I but I don't, I'm, I'm not going to say that I think they will either. I, I don't know what they would think. Yeah. That's a tough one. Should violent felons facing deportation be released into our communities? Now, can I just remind you I where... if you put it that way, they're going to say, I'm not for that. <laughs> well, I'm saying, because guess what? Because you know where they're going to put the halfway house. They're not going to put it in Lincoln Park. They're going to put that bad boy in your neighborhood. Now, imagine he looking out. He just came home from being a violent sex offender. And you think they're going to open it up in our neighborhood? In, in, in a white neighborhood? Not happening. No. Talk Chicago, 1690. You saw what happened to that little girl in the bathroom at McDonald's. We'll be back after traffic, news, and the weather. So, I was saying before I left, though. One of the most... I mean, Carrie is such a wonderful person. She is. But it's like, you know how you believe something? Wait a minute. So Carrie won the, the second year. time she ran. But I mean, was that when Mike Alvarez ran? She won that time? She lost that time. Oh, and okay. she lost by this much. And well, Mike Alvarez had everybody, I mean. But Mike but Dick Mel basically just did Jones asked me to, to, to put I mean he was on like forty thousand cards we passed out. But that's my but think about this. But a lot of people cross carry out for Mike Alvarez. He he recant he recalled a time when he had all of the black women in the caucus. He taught I don't want to tell you the whole story, right. but how he flipped them all. And it was like they and they and then they came back and Mariana came with the cash. And so Cash really talks they double they so the black women double teamed. Man, I don't even want to get to it, but I'ma tell you, I was just sitting there like, man. And so many of these people when they in trouble, I'll never throw them under the bus. Right? Right. It's like and then when you see when they in trouble, we don't throw them under the bus. When you see the uh them getting jammed up. It's like it's crazy, man. Like even just that, even the whole email thing. Like I tell you what, though, the old man got got credit in the bank, so I ain't gonna even trip. However, I really wish that the answer to black people would stop being that we are going to cut our own leverage off to make the white people happy instead of using the leverage. So if you know that they are intimidated or bothered by someone. It almost seems like you would want to have the relationship with that someone. I can talk to him. Not I can handle him. Right? And then if you come talk to me, then my answer is going to be, well, we'd like to get 10 jobs here. We'd like to see about this person's contract. What are we doing? My whole point is, is to get to the table to open up stuff and bring it back to the black people. Right. So... But instead, our thought is kill him. Take a moment, share the broadcast. So check this out. Remember how I asked you about 
How come JB hasn't donated to Kim Fox? He gave $58,000 to Margaret Croak. Who's that? A lady that's working, running for state rep. Oh. Plus his wife. That's a lot of money for a state His rep. wife, plus his wife and him gave the max that they could personally as well. I mean, can we all agree that the only reason Mike Bloomberg is even a factor is because of his money? Because he is horrible. Horrible. Horrible in the debates. Horrible. Thank you, me.
You are tuned in to the Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Hey, Todd, it's the top of the hour. So we got to say what's up to the WVON Morning Show team. What's up to Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom, as well as Miss Sonia Escobar, the news conductor of the Soul Play. Uh, Todd, um, have you ever heard of the uh, school-to-prison pipeline? Yes. Um... I, you know, I, I bet if most Americans actually knew how many people actually never graduated from high school, they'd be surprised. Um, how many people never graduated from high school? I have no clue. I don't know the actual numbers. But is it a lot? That when they they tell us how many people don't, they leave out some numbers because you know, a lot of people. All oh, right. Well, you know, Rom had a mastery later. of that, right? Yeah. He would fix the high school graduation. Like he would take, he would go to take your grammar school. Remember, he was graduating people from college, <laughs> right? He was making up all type of numbers. But Todd, the fact of the matter is, we know that there are five communities in Chicago that they spend approximately five hundred million dollars a year incarcerated. They call it the million dollar block. If you ever go to the website, it's called the million dollar block, and they can show you how much money is invested in criminal justice, uh, like not criminal justice, but putting people in the prison system, and it's places like North Lawndale, uh, Little Village, Inglewood, not Little Village, uh, what is it? It's North Lawndale, it's Austin. It's Inglewood. It is. Alvin Gresham? Mm, there's two Latino ones. Oh. Not Little Village. Uh, Pilsen? Uh, not Pilsen. Um, uh, 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 it might be Back of the Yards. And uh -huh. there's one more. But, uh, is it somewhere like on Fullerton? Or, like, where, what's over there by uh, Little Puerto Rico? Humble Park. Humble, Humble Park. Park. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, Todd, what if I told you? that Inspector General Joe Ferguson did a report and found out that in 2006, Mayor Daley got a grant to create the Juvenile Intervention Support Center. In 2006, Mayor Daley got a grant from the federal government to create the Juvenile Intervention Support Center. Now, Todd, as we always think of these things, the way we think of government programs as a way to help black folks, but often they become ways to trap black folks. Now, ironically, guess where this, this ironically, guess where this uh, juvenile intervention support center was located? Yes. Oh, they actually did build it. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. they didn't build it. Oh. They repurposed a, a facility. No. Oh. Guess what facility they repurposed? What? Uh, the 39, the station at the 3900 South Block of California. Now, why is that important, Todd? Because it's near the, the criminal court? Why? Because, because that is where John Burge... That was John Burge's old stomping grounds. Oh, really? Yes. So now, they have repurposed the building to use this federal grant to create the Juvenile Intervention Support Center. Now, if you were to listen to that, you would think that that is going to help children. And it was positioned, presented as a way to divert young young juveniles who were possibly going to get caught up in the court system it was there to have a how many times have we heard this a one stop shop of services right yeah. you know how we hear that all the time a one stop shop so we remember now it's like so now that's the whole thing now like let's put the kids and then let's make sure we've got wraparound services well this isn't a new concept so now Ty children get picked up by the police and now instead of taking them to jail or taking them to the station, guess what they do, Todd? 
They take them to the juvenile intervention support center where parents would think that your child would have a better chance of not in entering into the criminal justice system. Right. I mean, right. I think they talk to some kind of uh, uh, psychologist, sociologist, something. All of that's supposed to be in this facility. And guess what? Can I tell you what? Right. There was a company that got out that the, the, the responsibility of providing those wraparound services got outsourced to. We'll talk about them in a minute. So now, Todd, there is now a place where you can take all of the violent or all of the youth that are in, that could potentially be entered into the criminal justice system and you issue a giant contract to people to help divert our children from going into the criminal justice system except for one thing. Guess what? What? On a two to one basis, they send more children into the criminal justice system than they prevent. Hmm. So now, for perspective, they sent twice the number of children who would not have who, who so the whole purpose of this is to keep kids from going to jail from getting them in the process this is now it evolved so they say so they say but it evolved Todd into what Joe Ferguson described as a police station for children where they process thousands of children every year and sent them into the criminal court system. So it, it just became another police station. But better than that, when you read the report, the company SGA Youth Services, who got the multi-million dollar contract, did not keep records, did not follow up, but then admitted, check this out, that they were sending children who weren't so bad into bad environments Thus, making them worse. So when you got sent to this, this juvenile intervention support center, you got sent and put into a place where essentially you were more likely to commit crimes or get involved in the system. Because you know how they talk about you go to jail and you learn how to be a better criminal? Angels with dirty faces. So yeah. now what you have is literally a federally funded program in a police station that was how that once housed John Burge that is now sending our black children to to the criminal court system at a two to one rate. Now let me add to this. They said that 34% of the children who went to this facility were more like, this is from SGA Youth Services, this is their, their own words, that the children were more likely to have more harm done to them than good. Mm -hmm. God. The federally funded pipeline to chip for children and we pay for it. Now, when we come back, we're going to talk about SGA Youth Services. Because who is this SGA Youth Services? That is in charge of warehousing and sending our children to the pipeline. I'm starting to feel a little crazy, y'all. Mm -hmm. Just a little. We'll talk about it more when we come back. Stop Chicago. More of the morning show with Mays Jackson coming up on the Talk of Chicago, 16 night. That's crazy to me, man. That is past crazy. I don't, I don't, uh, 
that means that somebody in the administration isn't paying attention and dropped the ball. I mean, no, I don't think you think that, or do you think they see? I feel like that's the passive thought of it. I'm not tripping on you. Know what I'm saying, but I feel like I feel like they knew what they was doing. Let's get these little niggas off the street. And we can deceive their parents by saying we're gonna get them wraparound services, and then your kid come home because you done sent them to the hoose gal at twelve for stealing a candy bar. Right. And then, to me, it's like so now you send this kid, and now he got to turn into a gladiator. Yeah, right. No, I'm serious. No, so you put right. the kid in the joint, man, and now he's going to jail with hardened criminals. You feeding them to the beast. Well, doesn't that go into uh, how, you know, we find these judges every once in a while, somebody will put a light on them, and how they will give a, a white uh, student a break when they get in trouble because they have a future, but black students, they're just like, okay, you go to jail. No cuz. They are? You are tuned in to the Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Ty Stroger. Ty, mm -hmm. Sun Times headline reads, $4.8 million city program to help arrested youth could actually increase their likelihood of re-offending. Watchdog says, in a new report, Inspector General Joe Ferguson concluded, it's, possible, it's impossible to determine the juvenile intervention and support centers reduced recidivism. So Ty, remember I tell you about the pain and suffering of black people being used for white folks to be prof to profit? Right. It's the truth. So did you you, you heard you see the price tag? Four point eight million dollars in a city program. There you go with them programs, right? <laughs> now first of all, you know that's not now you know a four point eight million dollar program you know they ain't giving that to no black folks, right? Not at all. Right? So then I decided to go look up SGA Youth Services. Right? And I look it up, Todd, and I find out that they... Let, let me tell you what they call themselves. So it's a... Let me tell you what the picture is. Can, guess what Guess what the picture is on the website. White lady protected saving the poor black kid with the cornrows. They got black kids... With all the pictures in the phone, in the in the picture, SJU services, right? All these look, all of these little black colorful kids in the picture, and then when you click on the about us, right? Then they show you like, and they always got the, they they show you the the light melaninated black people. I feel like <laughs> these are stock photos actually. Yeah, right? yeah this, this like is that. all stock photos. They like find us a vanilla. So then when you go to look at leadership, right? There's this picture of a pretty black girl with nice braids and all white folks. Let me read to you. Susanna Moretta, Ph.D. Martha Guerrero, she's the executive director. Lynn Liu, 
Carolina Hurtado, Andrew Fernandez, and Christina Ocon. Now, let me tell you what that... Todd, you ever notice, like... Hey, what, you, 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 you think any of those people are concerned about feeding a process? Like, do you think that... Listen, did you hear any of them names? You think any of them people are concerned about saving black children from going to jail? Eh, could be rabbit. No, I don't, <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> think about think, so. think about every time we see a story about somebody black getting beat up in jail. It's like some Latino officers. When you hear about the Latino officers that patrol our neighborhoods, there and they, was a, you're right. There was a lot of stories. I mean, I don't know why. You gotta listen to a black cop tell you about how Latino officers are assigned to black neighborhoods and they they exercise the maximum penalty that they can so they'll impound a black person's car on the way to work mm-hmm. so they can't never get their car back they take all they use all the dirty tactics all the dirty tricks and so then what we do is we send our children to we 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 then say oh they're going they come up with this good fancy words of we're going to stop recidivism and we're going to provide your children with wraparound services but what they really want to do is wrap them around wrap some bars around them yes right so 34 think about this more than one third of the children that get referred to them they send them or intentionally send them down a bad path Two to one, if you weren't, if they're supposed to divert you, wouldn't that number be inverted? Wouldn't you say for every two, every one kid that we send to the court system, we prevent two? Their numbers are inverted, and nobody says anything about it. See, I don't think it's passive. I don't. I think that what they do is they say, "You see that little Negro over there? He is going to be a problem." And so you know what they say, instead of letting him be a problem, let's get him in the system. Let's mark him up. And then, think about they got the whole thing worked out. So the police picks you up. They take you to this place that's meant to help you or that you sold to people that is supposed to help you. You then find out that this organization is now referring black kids to services that they don't need that send them to jail and make them worse. Now, if you don't think that the the companies that profit off of prison, like whether it's Sodexo, whether it's, you know, the people that supply the prison, because then when you go look at the board of directors, Todd, mm-hmm. the board of directors is all corporate big corporate investors etc and lawyers so essentially that like i don't see on the list it's like the guy who runs the hospital the guy all people who are positioned to profit off of the pain and suffering somewhere in the process todd think about two Think about what that, since 2006 to 2014. So if you think about thousands of kids a year that are being, that are being picked up and dropped off at this place, how many of those have been sent to prison? Mm-hmm. Seriously. Like, and, and, and I'm going to tell you what, and, and SGAU services will walk through and they would stand up and be at your meetings and y'all would be clapping and applauding them recognize not recognizing do you understand that one they they th- them one third of the black people well not black one third of the youth but we know who, who populates the criminal justice system right and they got a contract to do it they got a contract to do it guys 4.8 million dollars to send your children to jail and now you only got, I, I got seven seconds to it. I, I just wanted you to look at it. Okay. <laughs> hey, y'all. But he's ready now. So let me stop now. I'm going to get off of my soapbox. And now it's Todd Stroger with the amazing Black Fact of the Day. This Black History Month, the WVON Morning Show is proud to present Black, Black Facts. Facts. With today's Black Fact, here's WVON Morning Show host Todd Stroger. Thank you, voice. Maize.
Criola Catherine Jones, born August 26, 1918, was a mathematician whose calculations were crucial to the success of NASA, National Aeronautic, uh, sorry, National Aeronautic and Space Administration. So that's NASA, not NASA. Did I say NASA? Man, you're, you're too good to me. She worked at NASA for 35 years. Johnson's uh, County in West Virginia did not, did not provide education for African-American students past eighth grade. So she was sent to high school on the campus of West Virginia State, a historically black university. Johnson graduated at 14 and enrolled at West Virginia State University. That's the big school. Uh, she took every math course uh, offered and graduated summa cum laude. I'm sorry, that's the, uh, the uh, I'm sorry, the historically black house with degrees in mathematics and French. In those days, most graduates became teachers. After marriage, she became one of the first African Americans to integrate the graduate school at West Virginia University. That's the big uh, state school. While working at Nassau, she worked on all the Apollo, Apollo flights and was a central character in the movement movie Hidden Figures. She passed away February 24th at 101 years old. And that is our Black History Fact for today. Hey y'all, uh, that's Ty Stroger. He, do, he knows the difference. He does know the difference between NASA and NASA. <laughs> NASA uh, Cali? <laughs> NASA. 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 <laughs> yes sir, NASA. This is the Chicago 1690. We'll be back. I was very mumble mouth today. I could go in and then now, right? Now. Besides going to Jules. There's no S in Jules. <laughs> there is when you lived in Chicago all your life. <laughs> oh, hey, no. Please join me and welcome to Ming E. Take a moment, share the broadcast, share the broadcast, and share the broadcast. Choo 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 choo. Choo 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 choo. Now you got that? <laughs> Get him. <laughs> So they'll be knowing how to do it. Thank you. Goofball. Take a moment, share the broadcast. I love little girly boys like Reggie Rand the Troll. Hi, Troll! <laughs> ah. <laughs> See, I was just talking about getting rid of the trolls. Ah.
Hey guys, so you know what happens, right? What happens is, is as we grow and as we have stronger messaging and things that they don't want you to dig deeper on, you start to get trolls and you start to get people who try to distract you. So I would just remind you that on the days and the times when we start having very serious discussions about real shit and we start to see trolls, then you should really recognize um, you should really recognize that that means that we're sharing more information. So we're sharing real information and what they want you to do is be distracted. Um, Ty talked about it a little bit earlier uh, when we talked about those guys trying to put a team together to work against me. Um, because what they don't want you to do is to have your eyes open. right? They don't want you to build up they don't want it all to connect the dots, right? So today, we literally just connected the dots when a prison pipeline and all of a sudden you find yourself with a troll. Now you gotta ask yourself, who does that, right? And why today? And why with this topic? So, I think that what we should do is accept that guys, what we're doing is real and is breakthrough. I called it the Ma Maestro Domus and I'm going to tell you that what I notice is that the more we start to hit on real subjects, then what you find is that all of the distractions start to come. You know, I was yesterday because I was wondering why all of a sudden did people start tagging me in posts and starting to try and call me out after, even after having documented conversations about how we would operate in rules of engagement. And then I realized that I've been talking about stuff that really makes people uncomfortable. And so when you start talking about the things that make people uncomfortable, then they have to activate. Remember how you read in the email how people was like, man, we, um, we got to work on maids? Well, all of those agents are then sent to work and distract us. So that's why I didn't really snap off today. That's why I really didn't go off and have a whole thing. What I've come to recognize is that the closer we get to truth and the closer we get to real hard things happening um, and the closer that we get to connecting the dots, you know, people, we'll talk about it. Mm -hmm. Paid trolls, baby. They got to get paid to troll because they got to distract you because you know, again, Watch. I'm going to tell you that the stuff that we've talked about over the last couple of weeks is going to reactivate people who used to be sent before. You're going to start to see more intense focus on Maze again because we are in a space that's really making people uncomfortable. Got it? So understand that. And it's like once I realized that's what was happening... Right? Take a moment, share the broadcast. Talk Chicago, 1690. You are tuned to the Talk Chicago, 1690. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. Got my co-host, Tuhan Stroger, a Mm-hmm. You know what I've been noticing, man? What's that? I've been noticing that my critics are back. You know, everybody been quiet lately. You know, like, for like about six months, my critics, the, the trolls, the all the people was real, like, just chill, yeah. low-key. Then we start telling all this truth and stuff, and they all they come all back, <laughs> right? It's like, yeah. I, you know, because yesterday I was thinking about this, right? I was like, no, you know, I was like, it was pretty quiet. And then I started talking about things that made people very, very, very uncomfortable. I think Rob Bogoyevich made people uncomfortable. Oh, I yeah. think. I'm sure of that. Uh, uh, I mean, you know, I think we, I think this conversation that we're having today about a finance prison pipeline 
Um, I think that the connections that we are making, whether it is the radio, TV, print, news, and tying all of this stuff together, has got people nervous. And I'm going to tell you that what I've come to recognize is that when people get nervous, then the trolls come out because they, they got to go do their work. Mm -hmm. Right? It's like they got to, you know, it's like when payday, it's like the boss say, y'all got to get to work. The Negroes are, the Negroes are assembling. Get your Negro butt out. Didn't I pay you to st to keep Negroes fighting? Yeah, exactly. Right. Right. Exactly. Didn't I pay you? Don't I pay you to keep these Negroes distracted and fighting and, and, and causing problems? And I'm going to do it in the name of somebody else so I can try to appear righteous. But I just, you know what I just got through watching? And I think every maybe everybody didn't get through watching the, what was it the assassination of Malcolm X? What was the name of it? Who, who killed Malcolm X? Like if you saw who killed Malcolm X, man, I think that they should have learned from like some like the tactics, man. We saw it all. So you starting the same stuff? Stop it, bro. Just well, stop. You know, it. everybody's not on your side, even though they may look similar to you. Well, I mean, you know, I don't want to go back to the schools. And go back to the rats and all that good stuff. Let's just leave it alone. Let everything be. Just let it be peaceful. Mm -hmm. Right? It's like, I understand. Look, man, go earn your money, but go earn it with somebody else. I know they got people paid to come. It's like the paid maze distractors. The man, I'm going, look, I'm telling you, this, this, Todd, why is it that black folks be like, I'm going to take the black dude on? Why y'all don't take none of the white people? I'm with you. Like, we know how the sausage is made. It looks ugly, but the sausage isn't feeding us. So we need to show people how the sausage is made. Exactly. But the, and but the black folks be like, well, I, I, I got him, boss, boss, I got him. I'll take it this time, boss. I'm going to go get him. And I'll do it in the name of righteousness. <laughs> Some days I call Minister Mays up and say, Minister Mays, can you pray for me? Well, you know, for some odd reason, we do have people who are trying to save Candyland, and Candyland is not true. <laughs> <laughs> you know what kills me is, though, when the when the people who are, like, super black, are like, they distract the people and they're working for the super white people. Yeah, right. Like, like the super black, like, think about this. Think about this. Remember when we was watching the Malcolm X thing, and they honored the activists who killed Malcolm X? Mm. Remember? Like, so the people that was out waving and being exalted in the community and saying how great they was and they was all righteous, they was also the people who murdered Malcolm X. And it's like, what did black people learn from that? Right? What did you learn? It ain't the... And you know what they do? And white folks gas up. It Look, we always like the CIA did it. The, the book, the, the movie say, now they just gassed the Negroes up, the jealous Negroes, gassed them, and then they'll go do, they'll do our dirty work. Right, do what we want. Negroes. Man. Let's go to Brother Ball. Brother Ball, you don't talk Chicago 16. Man, the emotions are so high. You know, people are so emotional right now. You know, um, think about this. Think about the mayoral race in Chicago, right? We had five candidates to pick from. Why did we need five people to split up the vote five different directions? Ask the Supreme Court nominees because they're doing it right now. Yeah. Look, look at look at the Democratic race, the so-called presidential race that everybody's going to go vote for except for me, right? I'm not wasting my time with that garbage. I've never heard in the last 10 years of my life the biggest lie of the world, which is you got to pick the less of the two evils. Why do you got to pick the less of the two damn evils? Why are two evils the only options to ever pick from? You ever heard of a multiple choice question with just A and B? <laughs> you know what I mean, God? It, 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 man, I'm serious, man. The, 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 when, you go, when you go to a casino, right, and you know you play blackjack, right, most common game in there, mm -hmm. they got like 18 decks of cards, right? in one little little slot and they slide them jokers out, slide them out, slide them out. You don't know how many aces it is. Of course you know it's four in a deck. 
to each other. You don't know this, you don't know that. Why do we put some faith in one person to go down to Springfield, as y'all say, the swamp, to do anything back here in the biggest lagoon? <laughs> I'll holler at y'all later, Real man. Ball, you, you have a good day, bro. I, man, you know, I stay careful, but I stay ready, too. Let's go to Zakia. Zakia, you want to talk to Chicago 16, man? Okay, that's Sister Zakia. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Sister Zakia. Okay. Uh, good morning, Todd and, and uh, Maze, my son. Quickly, uh, speaking of young people, I was so impressed with uh, the young brother that was on yesterday. Yes, Miles. I called, I called a Latin school. Uh-oh, how yesterday. did that go? I called uh, Latin School at 312-582-6000. And I spoke to the young lady is the director of the upper school's office. She told me uh, that uh, the director, whose name is Mr. Kirk Greer. Mr. Kirk Greer. Yeah, Mr. Kirk Greer. He's the director of the upper school. Uh, they have three sections, lower, middle, and upper. Uh, he was in a meeting, and uh, what was uh, the purpose of my call? I told her I was a concerned parent, and I was concerned about Miles being an A-B student getting a D on his paper entitled Vanishing Black Men. And a group of parents had formed a committee and uh, we are planning to come up to the school. But first of all, we wanted to talk to the director. Uh, that's what I told the lady when I called 312-582. Write that number down, because we're going to say that. And, and what did she say? And what did she say? Uh, she said, well, are you a parent at uh, my school? I said, I am a parent that have children and grandchildren like the other parents. But are you a parent at Latin school? I said, no, no, I'm not. I said, we are a group of concerned parents, and we just want to know why an A.B. student got a D on his paper he did entitled Vanishing Black Men. And before we come up to the school, we want to <laughs> speak to the director. Uh, well, I will give him, what is your name? I said, Zakia. Uh, uh, spell it, I spell it. Uh, last name, Muhammad. She said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a kid. You know what? I'm going to have him say that number one more time. Todd, write it down. The number, uh, the number is 312-582-6000. The director of the upper school's name is Mr. Kurt Greer, who was in a meeting all day yesterday. Well, he need to call you back. We're going to call him back, too. Look, Sister Zaki, I got to go to traffic and weather, but thank you for being with us and being a supporter all the time. Hey, y'all, we'll be back after traffic and the weather. More of The Morning Show with Mays Jack. Yeah, so, I'm just telling you what I... It just, you know, like, I feel like I have my epiphany moments. And it's like, I, like, I, first of all, I got to observe my 24-hour rule because I should not have responded yesterday to Tanil and to uh, Tiger. And Pata, for real? For real? Don't be co-signing bullshit. Don't co-sign bullshit. Can I ask you a question? Did you know it was Savior's Day? Oh, no. No. Did oh, you? No, I read that. Uh, but did you know it? No. And so... I'm not... Well, I'm not right. I'm not but if there's no... If, and, and if there's no advertising, right? Like, have we ever denied anybody that comes up and says they want to be... So if the nation said they wanted to come on the show and talk about Savior's Day, I would have 100% been open to it. But you know, because... The trolls have been activated. They gotta go start some sort of best. So it is the conspiracy of the the sponsors to to ban the minister from the show. No, I didn't send the minister letters. Like, could you come on the show, <laughs> right? <laughs> but because when you want to be a propagandist, you can say dumb shit, 
and people, the, the peanut gallery would be like, yes, let me co-sign the dumb shit. So, Mays didn't speak on the Savior's Day because he is banning ministers. And then when you see niggas that you know co-sign the bullshit. Yes. Right? Like, when I saw Keevan, I was like, really, dog? Like, so, you never told us that well, you, know, you know, it's funny you say because that's what I say I was talking about uh, when I was talking about getting rid of people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, really? Uh, like yeah. so, you? I mean, I've worked with the with the nation because they were in the war. So you know, if they needed something, they came and we tried our best. Can I tell you know. something? But that's how I'm at the mosque every Saturday, with the exception of last Saturday, um, because my son, we were doing some. I had something to do because we, sh my son, works out at the mosque, yeah. right? The shot lab. He shoots there. He learn him and Ab work out. You know, Ab coaches them, gives them advice, etc. I'm there. Nobody has ever said Savior's Day is this day come. Savior's Day is this. Tell somebody about it, right? It's not covered in mainstream media, and then if they don't tell us, then how do I know, right? So I felt it was. So I yesterday I responded to the bullshit, but then it dawned on me that the real reason that it was all being kicked up was because I'm. I'm rubbing a lot of people wrong right now with some of the things that I'm discussing. And so, once again, the niggas got to get to what they be like, yo, just like we saw on the email, mm -hmm. right? Where they like, who's going to get at Maze because he's making too much noise? The niggas jump up and be like, I got it, boss. I got it. Now, check this out. Here's, let me tell you one more. I literally, after I got off the air, called Harold Davis. From Butt Naked Radio and said, mm -hmm. hey, I want to connect you with Rob Bogoyevich. Because I think your audience would be perfect for him, especially with his criminal justice. But I think it would be a big get for you. Meanwhile, your representative is, is undercutting you without even knowing what the fuck is going on. Cosign. I mean, cosign, right. But it's like niggas that jump on some cosign shit because they just, they jealous. Like, you mad because you was watching. That's what it was. You watching and you being like, damn. As much as loud as I talk and as many capital letters as I use, mm -hmm. I can't stop that nigga. I'm going to stop that nigga if it's the last thing I do. Nigga. Ain't no squirrel. I know it. I ain't no squirrel. That ain't no squirrel. This is my break. You are tuned into Top Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Hey, Todd. Did you watch the debate last night? Yeah, I watched some of it. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. What you mean, man? You know, this was your man, Uncle Joe's big shot. <laughs> this was his big chance to put up. Uh, first of all, I, you know, I'm not sure if I'm uh, if Uncle Joe's my man. He's looking pretty old. I'm not. I'm not sure. What? To somebody to fall asleep. But we already had great. Todd, I, I don't know asleep. about you, man. You are not the. You are not a loyal friend, man. You you out the back door. Uncle Joe is your man. I don't think I ever said Uncle Joe and I were. were oh, 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 okay. He, wait, he wait. See this? Who I thought might make uh, a good candidate. This is what we need. When's see, last Sonya, time Uncle Joe called me? Sonia, see this? That's see Sonia. This is you got to start. We got to start capturing when people make promises when they make statements. Because see, right now I would be like, and now I'll go back to the archives and it'll be like, I think Uncle Joe's gonna win. I'm for Uncle Joe. Yeah, yeah, go did, Uncle Joe. Did I say he invited me to, to Thanksgiving dinner? Who no. did? <laughs> <laughs> He's just another candidate. Okay, can we also agree that Mike Bloomberg, the only reason Mike Bloomberg is in the race is because he got that bad. And the press is going to prop his ass up. Billion well, I mean, the press is going to prop him up because he's propping up the whole industry. He sure is. I mean, think about this. So you all understand there's such, such thing as earned media and paid media? Mike Bloomberg has cut all, the, like most campaigns work to get earned media. Yeah. Right? 
Mike Bloomberg said, "Bus earn media. I'ma just pay for the media." Yeah. And the you amount will of, know me because I will be on every station in the nation. And then you pay. For, yeah, the money you spend gives you the earned media. Yeah. Because they're reporting on how much money you spend. You're like, did you see what he did? He just dropped four hundred million dollars, and yeah. I don't think we're ever going to get biased. I don't think that there's any media at this point that has not been impacted by Mike Bloomberg. None. None. Not no. None. Who? <laughs> Seriously. I mean, I opened up Capital Facts the other day, and on like they put Mike Bloomberg's logo on top of the Capital Facts. <laughs> like they, they was like, I think I might be the only person that is not getting paid from Mike Bloomberg. From Mike Bloomberg, yeah. And I got the biggest audience. But again, I think it probably goes back to the email when they was like, uh, "It's not working very well." Could you get us a list of things you've done for the black people? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, like th- that's the thing, right? Like, yeah, I'm gonna be straight up. When I'm getting, when I'm getting it, I'm getting. It. But I'm not going to sell you it. If I don't believe it. Now I might tell you I'm working for dude And so because I'm working for dude I'm going to tell him the right things to do Right Right. And I'm gonna t- But I'm going to tell you it's a job I'm not going to sell you That this is the best candidate mm-hmm. I'm like I'm working And I'm good at what I do What, uh, what about Klobuchar See I feel like the white folks Are trying to sneak her I in there spell it mm-hmm. nah. See man just- you should be able to spell that out You should sound that out See, man, you went, they put you in a special St. Ignatius class. You weren't in the same class with Tom Cullen, were you? You know what? <laughs> Don't you say that Tom was, uh, when we first came in, Tom was in the A and I was in the B. See? They, they were only, Say, and there was only C? There like 15 people in, in, in A, and, you know, every other class had like 30. Those eight people were. The, those they they knew how to take all our money out the black community. They was like, we are priming you to rape, rob, and pillage those Negroes <laughs> to the benefit of your family for generations to come. Yeah. Todd, so who else? You, what what what? Who? So what about uh, Jesuit education? It's a great education. Ah, uh, Jesuit. Is the Jesuits the ones? Which ones is the ones? You know. No, I don't know. I don't you know the one. Yeah, when everybody says that, that you know, then I know. <laughs> I know, I know. You know, know the one. Bad, whatever it is. <laughs> right. You don't stop. Let me leave it alone. All right, so Todd, um, I guess my question is, man, um, who won? Huh? You got audio? Play me some audio, son. No, I would like Senator Sanders. We would like to bring Mr. Steyer in on this conversation. Mr. Steyer, please. I was talking about all your programs. Hey man, but that was the blackest of the black debates. That's when those went to a fight in the hockey match. Broke out. Hey, I'm gonna tell you what. They got them. Those moderators got ran, ran over. Mm-hmm. Ran over. But can I tell you what I also saw yesterday, which I am so. I'm, I'm going to say we have a role in this. Like, can I tell you what I have been noticing? Did you watch CBS last night after the debate? Did you see that they had. I, I did not write the brother's name down. But he. What I am loving is black pundits being included and they get to be black. Oh. Right, like he was like, man, he was like, uh, we ain't talking about a candidate that don't look like us, that ain't never said us. We talking about we want to participate in the legacy of wealth that the United States has too. I was watching, and I believe, I you no, know, I saw this somewhere. Do you think this is uh, because it was South Carolina, and then no, it's all about black folks in South Carolina? I think yes, to an extent. But usually the black folks get on TV and they try to try to appear white. Or they try to be as close to white as possible. Like he was on being black, black, blacker than black. Mm-hmm. Like in a nice suit, nice tie, the whole thing. Mm-hmm. But I but what I thought was great was and it made me think of like Amisha Cross. It made me think of that young man. It made me think of uh, Gianno Caldwell, who by the way got tweeted by President Trump, Gianno. Got tweeted about his book. He's gonna be appearing at the Reagan Library. I know it's like I'm. I'm happy for the young black folks, nice. regardless of where they're at. And so it's great to see a space. You know, Todd. I, I feel like I missed my era twice. Like if I could have been old school, 
I would have been an old school G politician, boy. Y'all would have hated to see me as the commissioner because I'd have been to meetings like, turn this mug up. And then I feel like the era of being proud to be black again is returning. And I feel like I'm on the old end of it. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously. Like, like I, I know exactly. It's like me going to school and it seemed like whenever my class was uh, the top, Things were kind of boring, and the, you know we didn't have good athletic teams. Everything was kind of blah. And then as soon as I leave, things just go ah! right. Yeah. And it's like you know I could have been a national pundit. I could have been famous one day. I mean I don't. Know. No, you still can. I, I don't know. You're still young. Uh, you know that. Uh, but you're right. I mean there's a ton of, of younger people. Younger people who yeah. are conscious, who know what's up, and they are not. Taking no shorts. Look, y'all, it's Talk Chicago 1690. When we come back, we'll continue this conversation. Plus, Todd, I want to talk about what the heck is going on at Lincoln Park. We'll be back. The Talk of Chicago. The CPS and the Watch Voice of the Nation. Done. 1690. I'm w telling you now. Joe Soul, I think the uh I think it's the Jesuits that like the like the guy. Jesuits be like the bend over. No. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't remember any Jesuits being in, in the forefront of that kind of stuff. But I will say, you're right that, that all the orders have had some kind of problems with uh, people being a little crazy. Yeah, y'all. See, man. Everybody has. Nobody invites me to. Men. I tell people out there, you can't trust me. Keep your eye on men. I don't trust them. I sure ain't trusting no man around my children. Oh no, I don't trust nobody around my kids. Man. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, sorry, dog. You ain't no sitting on the laps. Ain't no hugs. Ain't That's no. Right. It's like, yo, my kids. Look, I, I be like, I. <laughs> you ain't never worry about that, with my kid. Um. So yeah, man. I've decided that. Um, and then I started to go live and go crap snap off on everybody today, mm -hmm. but I changed my mind. Like I was gonna do a whole little, you know, I was gonna play some clips and, you know, sometimes like I have the most evil mind. Can I tell you something though that I was that was so dope talking to Dick Mel yesterday? Was it was that the stuff that I know to do is not crazy. It's just black people are scared. It's like yes. Black people are scared of a, like you in a war. He like man, we in a war. We gotta win. He like man. He was telling me about the pieces and like the things he would do. And it's like I'd be like man, if black folks. And you know what's interesting is Al Ronan, who was from that same area, used the same strategy. He Al Ronan was his at one point. Yes, Al got uh, certain legislators to be on the other side of what the Democrats wanted at certain times. And he could get anything. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Then, man, I mean, I mean, just listening to his tactics, like he was like, he got one of his deals was to get all of the he he was in control of all the bridge tenders. Oh, really? Right. So he was like, so imagine those are electric electrical engineering paying jobs. He was like, it's three shifts. The bridges only work in the summer they don't go up in the winter so my young kids would take the my my vets would take the first shift my second the second shift would be a young kid in college and the third shift would be somebody who wanted to kick it and party and because they didn't have to work three-fourths of the year because summer was only yeah i mean unless when, there's some kind of emergency you don't need a bridge tender. It, he was i mean just the thought process of like milking every like being like, don't never let an opportunity get by you, and it's always about the amassing of power. And he was just like, you know, like, oh, he worked with you. I mean, he was like, look, I work with you. You know, we'll help each other. I mean, and then he was just talking about like the real organizations and nobody. He was just talking about how he couldn't believe that that people who had been committing and couldn't get on the ballot, that they were even str like. No, I would, there's no organization anymore. I mean, right. And, you know, slowly but surely, as, uh, you know, people who are my, my uh, friends today, you know, the Dorothy Tillmans and the Bobby Rutches of the world, I mean, when they became committee men, it was 
part of the strategy was, you know, they are going to be part of the group. So, you know, that means that now you've got a, a block of wards, maybe uh, we'll go with eight to ten wards, who aren't truly cooperating with the greater group. And I'm not saying that they may not have had some, some good reasons why, but that helps diminish the ability to get people elected. And as time goes on, those numbers grow, and, you know, essentially, as I always said, what happened to the Democratic Party was the party was not much of a party anymore. It was the mayor's party, then it was the, the Democratic organization of Cook County who could do some things, especially in county races, but for the most part, the committee men in the city were looking for direction from the mayor. Uh, so he said, we're all going left. They went left. They weren't concerned about what was going on with the uh, suburbanites or anything or how they thought. Uh, for the most part, not concerned too much about what the, the black wars thought. So now we're at this point where between the court system, especially the court system, that there's not a lot of power in being uh, uh, the committee, but there still is power. You know, I should have stayed the committee The one thing as a community, you're not really doing a lot of work. I was just tired. But as the committee man, especially in our area, shoot, it seemed like either people were were dying, moving, doing something left and right. That's that's really where the committee of power lies today. Is uh, helping appoint someone that someone that the office has been vacated. But other than that, you know. There's no two working together. It's not like a, people got a bunch of people working with them to help get out the vote. You get what you get. So in a ward like ours, where we have a voting base that's always voted, it's much easier because this is what they do. They're used to it. Now they're going to start dying off, and we'll see who replaces them and that they'll keep the voting trend up. Rise and shine. Escalate. War is not the answer. Broken love can conquer it. You know we got to find a way to bring some loving here today. Monkey foots. Punish me with brutality talk to me so you can see what's going on what's going on what's going on and what's going on oh what's going on oh you are tuned in to the top of chicago 16 90 a.m i'm your host Maze jackson got my co-host todd stroger todd you like that song you know the uh the people in the background no. Those are, you know, in the beginning, people are talking mm -hmm. and stuff like that. You was at that party? 
Oh, no, I was too young. <laughs> Those are Detroit Lion players that he was friends with. And he brought them into the session and, and let them do some, some things. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. You know what? Because, you know, they're in Motown. Oh, okay, right, right. They didn't even know they had a football team in Detroit. Didn't they got a football team? Detroit uh, Lions. That was a time when Detroit was okay. Okay. You yeah. know what? I That's even in our lifetime. Okay. <laughs> you know, I've been a little bit, Marvin Gaye, I've just been a little bit sketchy on him since the Marlon Brando, Quincy Jones day. Right? Oh, oh, Marlon, Marvin Gaye had some Marvin some, some Gaye, problems. literally. <laughs> but, it, it, well, like a lot, most things that we see that happen, they happen because, uh, you know, your parents, had some problems or some adult in your life caused some problems when you were young. So he was suffering from his father, in my opinion, that, uh, the, the one he my shot? My PhD, uh, suffering from his father, no, his father shot him. Oh, right. Uh, being a cross-dressing cross -dressing reverend. That can uh, probably throw you off on your job. Wait, what? Is that what happened? Where you been? <laughs> yeah. Yes, his father would, uh, would go out and wear dresses with his mustache, <laughs> but he was also a minister. But what that church was this? Threw him some, some what kind of church was that? I don't know. Lord have mercy. Well, you can't come to my church. All right, it's Tuck Chicago, 1690. Uh, Ty, you got to say what's up to everybody else. What's up to Jennifer Thompson yeah. in the newsroom, as well as the musical conductor, the soul playing Miss Sonia mm -hmm. Escobar. And now that I am scarred for the rest of Scar the show, <laughs> um, let's go to the live line. I'm going to take a call before we go. And you're on the Talk Chicago 1690. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm great. Good. I got three things I want to say. Okay, the first one is I really think we need to rally behind Elizabeth Warren. I believe Elizabeth Warren will get the job done. Now, uh... I originally voted for, um, what's his name, the guy who, Sanders, mm -hmm. but I, um, I don't know now after thinking about it, and Trump won, but I voted for Sanders, but now that I think about it, I'm not sure what socialism would look like here in America. Sanders, I think, is a purebred socialist, but I think Elizabeth Warren uh, she's a capitalist, but she it, she has some imputed uh, socialism out of compassion for us and for for people in general. But I think that we really need to rally behind her. That's Number one. two, is anybody looking at Tom Steyer? He and Elizabeth Warren are the two that are screaming about how African Americans have been treated. More so, Tom Steyer. He wants to go back. He says. Look at how they've been treated and what we need to do to right this wrong. And then my last thing, and you guys can discuss, discuss this when I'm off the line. My last thing is, has anybody thought about the fact that this thing with China, this uh, coronavirus, the guy who wanted to scream about it, they shut him up. Some, I mean, the, the, the disease shut him up because he's dead now. Could this have been something manufactured? Next caller, please. Uh, wait, no, no, you gotta leave. First of all, I, and first of all, Ann sounded like a first time caller. So we're gonna give Ann props for calling in. <laughs> um, that's the first thing. I think I'm not going with Elizabeth Sanders because she looks a little batty to me. Um, I don't know if the HD, just the hairs that be out of place, it just is a distraction. I don't know. <laughs> that, I don't know. I, no, that can be a distraction. I've always thought that. I'm saying the HD, and she got like three or four of them. Like, you be like, what's going on with that? That's like she got a little. Um, Tom Steyer, to me, is throwing Hail Marys at this point, right? When you go to, I mean, again, anybody using reparations right now is Hail Mary. That's in my estimation. Um, and as it relates to the coronavirus, I'm not surprised what these people do. Uh, let me go to Steve in Hinsdale. Steve, what's up, man? Hey, man, thanks for taking my call. No problem, Steve. What's up? White multimillionaire out in the western suburbs. Hey man, why don't you come on and bring some of that multimillions down to the uh to the center of the city, man? Come on. I'm trying to fish down on the south side of Chicago. Okay. But launch my boat from one of those parks, and all the people tell me I shouldn't do it. There's too many gangs down there that can steal my boat. What can I do about that? What? What? I don't think I've ever heard. I never. Okay. Wait a minute. Now that's next caller, please. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, well, <laughs> yeah. No, that's true. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, I want to launch down south side of Chicago, one of those parks, 
People said, don't come down there. They're going to steal your damn parking boat. And uh, I said, well, then I can't. But anyway, I'll tell you what socialism is like. Bernie's going to steal all your money. Oh, okay. All these black people that need to get rich, and there's a lot of them that need to get rich like me, and they should get rich. I want you guys to have more money than me. But you know the problem? He's going to steal it all from you. He doesn't care. Thanks. Have a good day. All right, Next caller. <laughs> I, I, you know what? Can I tell you something? I grew up in Bolingbrook, right? So every once in a while, I need a little racism in my life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just to, just to make sure, like open racism, yeah. just so you can. That was that institutional racism <laughs> where they feel like this this has to be true. Right. Yeah. You, like you black people are gonna steal the votes. Yeah. That's hey, I have to say though. Uh, I may be wrong with my Marvin Gaye father comments. I got that from uh, one of my siblings. But his father had been beaten by his father, so he, and so therefore he beat his children. So that cycle mm -hmm. is probably what helped uh, Marvin be a little off. No, well, I mean, you can get beat, man, but you don't. That don't mean you going around getting. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not talking. It's, I'm mean beat. Okay, okay that, yeah. I was saying, that don't got nothing to do with Marlon Brando, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. All right, All right let's I don't go, know anything about that. Let's go to Green. Green, you're on Chicago. Hey, Maze, how you doing? I'm Todd. I ain't, man, y'all don't know. Y'all done sucked us in. We family. I ain't never seen you in person. <laughs> well, bring me a plate. <laughs> yeah, right. I love you, man. I love you. But let me say this. First, um, Maze, uh, what happened to the black folks' uh, report card? Judges we spoke about for. How do we get it? Keep us up on that because the judge that uh, McQuarrie McDonald, Van Dyke judge, we got to get him out. Uh, none of the candidates got me excited about them, but what I am excited about is black unity. And I'm saying that when the Democratic Party turned their back on Dorothy Brown, she got in that time and she got in because blacks rallied Kim Fox, the same thing. We don't need to make no excuses. All we need to do is get up off and do nothing, keep doing something, and we gonna win every time. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, uh, Green. I appreciate that. Sonia, you should record that one, too, because that's a good promo. He said, we suck the man. We all family. We don't even know him. And I said, give us a plate. <laughs> That'll be a great promo. Uh, hey, let's go to Lewis. Lewis, you're on top of Chicago, 16. Good morning. Turn that Todd. radio down, Lewis. <laughs> good morning. Okay, hold on. Even though I love hearing myself in the background, I'll be like, see, that Lewis is paying attention. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, man, this sounds a little crazy. I'm thinking, I'll be like, I'll be like Todd, turn your radio off. And you're like, it's not me, Maze, it's not me. <laughs> I'm like, Todd, turn it off. Lewis, you back? Man, Lewis must got that bad. Lou, we got to get Lewis some Bluetooth. So he got, <laughs> he, we got to get Lewis Hello? Bluetooth. What's hey, up, Lewis? Lewis? What's up, Lewis? Good, good morning, Maze. Good morning, Todd. Good morning. Hey, uh, you said you need a uh, little racism in your life. All you had to do was look at that uh, debate that they had, the Democratic debate last night, and that wasn't nothing about uh, <laughs> it. Was, it, It was just about racism. And uh, Tom, uh, Tom, Tom Steiner, mm -hmm. he was talking about reparations. Like, that's all we're looking for is reparations, you know. Everything they was talking about is uh, against us. Yeah, I mean, I, don't, I mean, I think that they, don't, they haven't had a comprehensive plan. They was like, we finna go by the Negroes. Get the reparations. Like, Tom Steiner, like, first of all, Tom Steiner, you know, if a white guy is talking about reparations, he is desperate. He's desperate. Yeah. Right. You ain't see the front runners now. When you see the front runners coming out, talking about yo rapper, cause see Mike, like if I was Mike Bloomberg, I'm gonna tell you, I'll put my ace card down. I'll be like, I got thirty million dollars on reparations, billion dollars on reparations right now. He got that. I know he can do that. Now, he's, now worth 50, he's worth fifty three billion dollars, you know. So one billion dollars ain't gonna hurt him no, no I, way. I'm Ooh, saying he gotta go. It. He gotta go thirty. See if you want to be the president, cause thirty, you still in the richest men in the world, and you, you all oh, now black people would be like, Lewis, I, I, I'm with you. Maze is wrong. He say a billion dollars. Negroes, my ass get big. I'm like a billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks, Lewis. Mama D, you on top of Chicago, sixteen ninety. Hey, good morning, good guy. Yeah, good, good morning, morning Mama D. Uh, you know, uh, Joe Biden talked about the answer to fix uh, the violence in 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 the, in the church massacre is gun control. He didn't mention nothing about hate, <laughs> which is, uh, is is more powerful. That's why people are killing because of hate, not because of gun uh, control, because everybody was killed with a registered gun. So that's the wrong answer. Bernie uh, Sanders talks about 
uh, distressed communities, blacks, uh, Latinos, and whites. But the idea of reparations, that's the only thing that turns me on because equity, blacks are entitled to that, but reparations is for the fixing the damage of the crimes against our humanity. And for all those candidates that does not know the difference in that, they're talking to the hand. Bloomberg is buying up everybody. Lori Lightfoot in Chicago, everybody, I guess, except for you, May. I don't know what's happening, but everybody's on the, on, on the payroll. And when they're on the payroll, they are just Judas is selling us down the river. Tom is for reparations, and that's who's going to get my vote. No reparations, no black vote. Thank you, Mama D. Um, so, Todd, I, with the presidential debate, so check this out. We're going to move the Lincoln Park conversation so I can get some guests, right? So I can get some guests to talk about that. I'm really mm -hmm. looking for Michelle uh, and the principal, but let's work that out. Look, man, Todd, it seems to me that black folks go easy. Can I ask a question? Did we hear anybody with any record-breaking financial commitments from Mike Bloomberg? Like, did we take the Negro money? Like, here's my thing. I don't know. I'm I mean, saying, I spread so much of it around. I'm, I, I have a feeling people are getting some real money that they've never seen before. But what is real money? That's a good question. And then the other question is... Well, as you, you told me many times, uh, we don't understand what real money is. We go for, we take the Negro money. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I, 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 I'm about to go pull up the campaign finance reports because then we can see. Yeah. Right? And we can see that how many people... Like, how how easy do you go? Right? I, I'm not... I am not saying I'm above Mike Bloomberg's money. But good Lord, I'm going to have something to show for it. Mm -hmm. Right? Let me tell you. I'm going to have some more employees. I'm going to have... Somebody else has got to do better for me to be doing Mike Bloomberg. Right? See, what Mike Bloomberg has done is appeal to everyone's individualism to present a collective. Right? But how much... What was... See, I feel like, again, we give up our leverage. If Mike Bloomberg needs you, what did you get for you and your community? Right. Right? Like, I'm not I'm not banging nobody. But I'll tell you what everybody will tell you. They will tell you what happened for me. That's my problem right now. That's really my problem right now. Because I could have been bought, paid, been bought and paid for. But I don't go easy. It's like, and it's essentially is usually black folks that are undercutting our price. Think about it. So if somebody say that you got the most powerful people in the state talking talking about you and you got the relationship, do you kill the goose or do you keep the goose alive and you use the goose for your advantage? Mm -hmm. We have been so brainwashed that the white folks know that they don't even got to promise us that pennies, pennies, pennies. <laughs> Do we have, let me ask the question. This, is, this, this will be your test. At the end of this presidential campaign, and everybody that's doing their thing, will we be able to say that there is an infrastructure after he left? Right? Will, will companies get bigger and better? Will they hire staff? You know, I saw, shout out to my man who got the job to do the print job for Bloomberg. But my question is, while you getting a subcontract, who got the master? Hmm. See, like, white folks, Lee, we, we, we excited because we made a little margin. White folks is like, man, I'm trying to buy a house with this. Right. And I just think again, we have got to stop shortchanging myself. I'm going to go to Harold before I go. Harold, I'm going to give you this last call before I get out of here. Oh, uh, the top of the ticket for me, is, of course, is Kim Fox. Kim I don't give a damn about none of these Democrats above that. I will go with Stig. If somebody come with Mama D, whoever brings reparation at the presidential level, I can deal with. And I can even deal with we're crazy. The man in the White House bringing it, if that's what it takes. But I cannot 
saying sneaky Negroes sneaking around trying to undercut Neville, P. Scott Neville, who got the appointment, who was following up with Freeman, who was put there, and then you got, I don't know who these people are, these judges that are coming up and who their allegiance is to, allegiance is to, but you clearly undermining the standard bearer for the Democratic Party. So there is no loyalty to the Democratic Party to African Americans in Chicago and they are trying to push us out of this city and you got a lot of carpet bag of Negroes with that Obama presidential library stuff that's part of it. Woo. Thank you, Harry. Hmm. I'm gonna tell you though, um, we do have a lot of people who are enlisted in the war against black people that are black people. It's like y'all gotta stop signing up for the enemy's army. Stop being a mercenary for somebody else and come fight it for your own. Right? Right. Stop being a mercenary for some, stop being a messenger for white folks to black folks. Why don't you be a messenger to white folks from black folks? If you got their ear, don't tell them what don't stop stop coming to us. Telling us what the white folks want us to know. Why don't you go tell the white folks? Cause see, if they had, if you had their respect, they would be like, "What do we got to do?" Todd, this president, this presidential race, I'm, I still haven't picked a, a candidate. I don't know if I can. That's what I was saying. And I don't. I, I'm gonna be honest with you. Right now, for all tickles and giggles. They not talking to the black people. Hey y'all, we gotta get up out of here early because it is time for the Urban Business Roundtable download. Um, so let me do this. Let me say bye to Miss Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom, Miss Sonia Escobar. She's the music conductor of Soul Plain. That's my co-host over there with the lime green neon shirt, Todd Stroger. I'm gonna be me, man. <laughs> and I am Maze Jackson asking the question every day, what's in it for the black people? And if you don't like it, you can still tell them. Maze said, we out of here. Peace. Live from the WBON newsroom, here's our news now. <laughs> Did you? I was watching yesterday on uh, Facebook Live. Um. I feel like Jan Schakowsky and all the white progressives did a, 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 a thing for Kim Fox this weekend. Mm -hmm. And it was almost like a direct response to us calling them out. It was Jan Schakowsky. Uh, it was... I feel uh, good about myself. <laughs> Jan Schakowsky, <laughs> Kelly Cassidy, um, Daniel Biss, Ron Villabom, and somebody. But what was great was it was, like, it was almost like they were doing it to prove... That they now, my question is: They spend some money, and did they do any specific? Yeah. You gotta say that not, they would be great. Not just the canvas, but did you do a mailer from Jan to the constituents? Mm -hmm. Right? Did you use your phone tree and your phone bank? Like, I want to know what are all the tools in the toolbox? See, because this they what they do is they give you a dog and pony show, so they gonna all get together. Fill up a room for two hours, um, and then when they fill up the room for two hours, they go out, they go door hang and say they knocking. You leave, and they're like, Shh, "Dead ours." Yeah, right. Never We're done. Again. We're done. Yeah. Right. Got to make them. You got to make them show and prove. Like, let me see how many email blasts you sent. Am I on a a Jan Schakowsky email blast? Am I on a right like? What, see, the thing I think people don't understand, this is what, this is how they get us. They say, we're with you. And then, but what does with you mean? Exactly. If you don't have anything, so like, what do you use to elect your candidates? And I want everything that you do to elect your candidates, I want all of those resources at my disposal, and I want to see it implemented. Right. And then I want to leave the north side and leave you to your constituents, right? To, you already know these people. I don't need to, if you tell them they're supposed to come out, you control your area, you need to be showing me what is your plan every weekend, every week, till from now until election. Right, so I don't but, have to worry about this. Right, so now I can just get a call and we can have a coordinated call. And so all of the people, will, but again, that's not gonna be stuff 
So I'm telling you all of this stuff now because y'all not going to call me. So I'm telling you all the things that you need to be doing right now because it's like they do it. They just refuse to, you know, they refuse to give me any of my props. But that's okay because I want Kim to win. So, like, who is the North Side coordinator? And what is the North Side coordinator's responsibility? And what is he doing every day towards your election? Does, does each one of those... Uh, do each one of those regions know how many votes they need to turn out and do they know where those votes are right like do they know like so I need to get this many votes out of 47 I need to get this many votes out of 32 I need to get this many votes out of blah 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 and do they have a mapped path to get to those numbers Mm -hmm. so I'm going to talk to if this senior home has this many people and if I get there and they're going to early vote all the seniors So do I have a senior early vote program, right? No. Do you have a nursing home program to vote all the people in the nursing homes? See, those are the advantages that the party is supposed to give you that they don't give because they don't know, Mm -hmm. right? Like, if again, who is the person that's coordinating all the nursing homes? Because if it was me, I would have a relationship with every freaking activity director at every nursing home because that's the person. So do I have a lunch program that's going to pay for lunch for every nursing director and the activity fund so that they can go take their people on an outing, right? Right. But no, you know. What y'all would do is be like, y'all going to send me another fucking email from, from Christian who I don't know. You know what, man? Some days, I just... It's so frustrating being me sometimes. It really is, guys. It's frustrating being me because I want to help my own people in spite of themselves. And it's like... Thank you, Sonia. And it's like I have to endure insult and injury to do right by my own people. Right? And it's like the white folks be like, you're welcome. (laughs) Yeah, right. Please come. Please come. Right? Yep. And it's like, Keith, I know it's free game, and I know you, like, don't tell people, but it's like telling people what to do. Like, I really don't want, I want people to be successful. Right? It's why part of the reason that I don't do as well is because I don't charge people for shit. I don't charge them to tell them how not to kill themselves. Mm -hmm. It's just I want to see people do good, genuinely. Now, you may not like my style, but the fact of the matter is, if somebody asks me for help, if you haven't MF'd me, I'm going to try and help you, right? With the hopes that at some point, when somebody says some stupid shit, you'll be like, you know what? I know this brother has helped me on so many occasions, I couldn't even possibly. He ain't never asked me for shit. He ain't never told me I got to do shit. He just said, if I call, I'm there to help you. Mm -hmm. And so, again, all of that that I just said needs to be happening. I hopefully someone from her campaign will do it. Because can I tell you what? The person that's working on his campaign knows how to do it. Because we were, we both ran Quinn's operation upstate and downstate. And Quinn MF both of us, and we went on to make our way somewhere else because we weren't their classic whatevers. Again, the challenge becomes you, these black campaigns allow white folks to convince them to be scared of the people that they don't want them to be cool with. Like, I ain't got no beef with Kim. I might have beef with all the white folks around you, but you let the white folks around you run you away from your strongest allies. Hmm. They're going to go 30%. I'm going to go 1,000. But their 30 is more than our 1,000. But right now, all of their people got options. Our people need to know they don't have an option. Yeah. But well, alas, people tend not to uh, want to come to, to uh, you know, like people like you, and until things are so dire, they try to do a last-minute thing, and well, that time it's too old. It's old. It's crazy. And for the record, 
I could have had a house. If I would have worked the kind of way, <laughs> I could have had a house. Like, I could have bought a house. I think there was something for me if I went there. I'm not as uh, high on, on the ladder as you, but I think, yeah, there was something there for sure. Mm-hmm. All right, y'all. Just got bigger goals. Peace. But can't nobody take away from me what God got for me. We do look like one. We do look like sherbet to them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. We up out of here. Peace.